Hi guys, William Morris here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Teviosity's next library in their Mosaic series, which is called Mosaic Pluck. So the library runs in both the full and free player version of Contact 6.5.2 and above, and it has an install size of just under 2GB. The library is currently on intro pricing for $99 and has a regular price of $119. Also if you do own any of the other Mosaic series instruments you can get an additional 20% off uh, of the price for the next few weeks. So the library is contained within this single patch here. And it's been split into these three categories that you can access via the snapshots menu. So we have lots of different ARPs, uh, we have a playable section, and also a rhythmic section here at the bottom. So as the name of the library suggests, all the sounds are a form of plucks designed to have a sharp transient and be able to cut through a mix. The UI is much the same as the other Mosaic libraries, so if you'd like to see that in more detail, you can check out my review of Mosaic Tape. But let's jump into some sounds and I'll start up in the harp section and just do a kind of handful of patches from each one. As you can see there's quite a few in each uh, category. You can see as I play that they kind of get different levels from the three different layers that each sound is made up of. So in this particular patch, uh, layer one is just this. The second layer is this additional rhythm. And then you have this kind of reverse that sort of comes in every now and then. So I'd say the majority of the library is kind of made up of these what I call full fat sort of sounds. So, you know, really fleshed out and could be a sort of mini cue all on their own sometimes. But obviously you can uh, mute off different layers if you want to, change all your levels. And also with these here, you can browse the uh, inbuilt uh, sound source library. So as you can see here, these are all our different synth sounds. We've got some different organic sounds going on in here some reverses and attack sounds. So tons of scope for uh, mixing up the patches. Okay, let's try a few more. So as you can see in the name for this one, it says TRP, which just stands for triplet. Uh, there's also straight as in straight eights or sixteenths kind of things. But it's really nice that they're labelled and uh, kind of nice to have uh, access to a lot of triplet sounds as well as straight measure. So everything in the ARP and rhythmic categories are all kind of controlled by the ARP module here. So you can just see it follows along as I play and obviously everything can be modified and this can be done on a per layer basis. So you see here we have channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 and these correspond to our sound sources in below. Okay so well, let's try something else. sort of really full featured, really kind of Q starter style patches. Got to try the Blade Runner one. That's cool, I like that. Let's uh, try some more. Just 
play simple chord stuff because there really is so much going on uh, within the patches. If we jump back to the main mixer page, it's kind of constantly uh, moving all these macros. You see we've got some uh, envelope stuff going on, some filtering, a bit of drive happening and a gate effect as well. It's nice to have these here. They do kind of add uh, just a little thing of interest, especially on these sort of slow evolving patches. And the only slight issue if you start to use a lot of these sort of things is that it's uh, quite a lot of automation and effects going on. So expect a, a bit of a CPU hit as that kind of happens. Let's uh, try a few more. Yeah, again, sort of great uh, cue starter stuff. You could really sort of picture these as intros or kind of beds just to be happening underneath a cue. All right, so I'm just gonna do a couple more and then we'll jump into the uh, other categories. <laughs> And obviously everything will also sync to uh, host tempo. So yeah, that's a taste of the ARPS category. Let's jump into some of the playable ones. So these ones don't have uh, any of the ARP or kind of rhythmic stuff applied, they're just perky. But you can of course turn it into an ARP in the uh, module. So a lot of these sound like they'd be really cool just to kind of uh, give that attack to your chords. Maybe just as a layer on top of something that has a more sustained sound underneath. But uh, let's try a few more. So yeah, this kind of reverse category I'd say is the only sort of outlier for the, the library. It's got a cool sort of little uh, pitch warble on those ones. That must be the uh, drunken part. Drunken guitars as well. That's nice, I like that one. They're definitely very full featured. Um, I can't see them kind of fitting straight into an existing track without doing a fair amount of tweaking, but it does mean to kind of give you inspiration and start you off on something. You know, it's a pretty full featured sound to, to listen to. Uh, let's try a few more. Another reverse one. Nice. I think 
this is definitely the most uh, useful category for me, the playable stuff. Yeah, I like the way the, the three kind of sections uh, fit together here. It tends to have the dominant sound sitting on channel one and then a kind of additional embellishment type stuff on uh, two and three. Let's do one more. Can't resist anything called space piano. Cool. Uh, so I think we've covered quite a few of the uh, playable patches. It's definitely a lot to choose from and obviously you can uh, mix it up even further just by swapping out a layer. So uh, let's take a listen to the last category which is the rhythmic stuff. So again these are sort of really full featured sounds and so I think they tend to sound best just using single keys or you know third type chords or something. And as you can see, everything's happening in the ARP module here. And same as the uh, ARP section, we've got a mix of triplet and straight note stuff. Like that. Okay, so that's a bit of a selection from the uh, rhythm section. So yeah, there's some really nice stuff in there. I'm not as keen on some of the more uh, electronic patches, but a lot of the uh, more organic ones uh, I think I could definitely get some use out of. I think a lot of whether you like this library and you're going to get on with it is kind of based on whether you prefer sort of fully featured patches kind of all singing or dancing ready to go out of the box um, versus maybe sort of more stripped back stuff which is probably easier to fit into an existing track um, but maybe takes a little bit more sort of coaxing to kind of get there. I'd say my only issue with some of these patches is that they're very almost kind of overproduced where there's so much sort of going on you know you've got all these uh, often sort of three or four macros at least kind of changing a parameter and you've got three different layers kind of all doing something. So it adds a lot of interest, you know, if that's the only thing you're playing. Um, but when you try and fit that then with other instruments, you're quickly going to be taking up a lot of the, the space in your track with them. So I think if I was fitting them in, say for this patch, for example, you'd sort of be saying, well, that one straight away. 
maybe I'm going to take out completely and I'm just going to um, turn off the gating. But I'd say, yeah, this is definitely going to appeal to somebody who, who needs just a quick uh, sort of cue starter to, to get going straight away. And, you know, often kind of listening to a cool patch, it'll give you an idea for something else. Oddly enough, this is actually the uh, second sort of Plux library that I've been looking at in the past few weeks. I previously did a review for uh, Plux and Mallets from Riot Audio. And although both libraries are, are based around, you know, plucked and malleted sort of attacky sounds, they definitely sound really different from each other. And the uh, Riot Audio library definitely kind of focuses more on playable instrument stuff as opposed to um, arps and rhythms like you find in the heavy osity one. But uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. But if not, I'll see you again on the next one.